Bosco Bites, coming to you from Don Bosco Youth Services, Episode 1, Part 5. Don Bosco meets Joseph Buzetti. The year is 1871, December, at a place called Varase. Don Bosco is seriously ill, and at his bedside, there is Peter and Rhea. Remember his story, we already spoke about it. Peter and Rhea is looking after the ailing Don Bosco. And from Turin, Joseph Bozzetti, an oratory companion of Peter, wrote, Look and Rhea, our father is in your hands. See that you carefully look after him. You realize that you will have to answer to God for it. The day Don Bosco recovered and got out of bed, Peter Andrea hurriedly sent a telegram to his friend Joseph Buzetti with the delightful news. But who? Who was Joseph Buzetti? Why did he love Don Bosco so much? Here is his story. We already know the life of Don Bosco. His dough was constantly being knocked by the poor, the migrant, the orphaned young one, who were looking for their first jobs. These were the type of boys that were constantly at the doorstep of Don Bosco. He housed them in a place that he called the Oratory. Don Bosco, in fact, my dear friends, never entered their names in any register. When did they come in? When did they go? Some notebooks definitely had some notes, but not very systematic. Don Bosco was not preoccupied with transcribing every event in the oratory. Don Bosco only tried to do some good. Salesian historians tell us that in 1847, seven boys were taken in. But where were they registered? Don Bosco had just turned two rooms into a small dormitory and on the wall hung a crucifix, the image of our Blessed Mother and these words, God sees you. Now, in order to look after these small boys that Don Bosco had already started taking in, he needed help. Don Bosco needed somebody to be along with him, to help him in his work. He called some of the boys who attended the oratory to see if they could assist him. But after a couple of months, distracted by preoccupations of family or of other demands, they left Don Bosco and the oratory. This made Don Bosco suffer, but he was not discouraged. He tried again. It was a Sunday evening. A crowd of youngsters were laughing, playing, running about in the playground of Don Bosco's first oratory. For boys who had been working the whole week on building sites or on factory floors, Sunday was the only day of rest and relaxation. They would come to the oratory, distract themselves by having a good time. It was also a time for them to nourish their souls. It was on Sunday that they could receive Holy Communion, go for confession, recalls the 10-year-old Joseph Bozzetti, a migrant bricklayer from Lombardy. Joseph Bozzetti, just 10 years old, came to the oratory along with his brothers. And Don Bosco came out of the church joined the recreation. He spoke some of the most interesting things in the world. They recall, they say, they say, the hours gradually passed. It began to grow dark. Joseph Buzetti got ready to go back home together with his brothers to the home that they had rented. His brothers had already left to go home earlier to prepare the evening meal. And when I approached Don Bosco to wish him goodbye, he held out his hand and I 
caught it to kiss it. Don Bosco didn't seem to mind. But he stopped me from leaving. Oh, what's going to happen? I said to myself. I tried a couple of times to free myself, but without success. By now, all the boys had gone and I was left alone with Don Bosco. I made one last effort to leave and to go to my brothers. It was getting dark. But Don Bosco never seemed to let go of my hand. At that moment, Don Bosco, who seemed to ignore what was going in through my mind, looked at me and said, Great! I am happy to be able to speak to you. Tell me, would you like to stay with me? Stay with you? What do you mean? You are a bricklayer, right? Well, I would like you to help me to build many other houses. I was surprised you want me. I am only a laborer. I carry materials. I have used a trowel for perhaps just a year. If that is what it takes, would you be prepared to come? I need to pick some youngsters here and there who would like the idea of the oratory. Would you be one? Would you accept? I was just 10 years old. To be with you, what would I have to do? I asked. I will start you at an elementary school. I will teach you the rudiments of Italian, then some Latin, and if God wills, in time you could become his priest. I stared at Don Bosco as he was saying all these things. I was too young to comprehend what Don Bosco was inviting me to. I seemed to be in a dream. Since I didn't know what to answer, he added, I will speak to your brother Charles and then we'll know the Lord's will better. Don Bosco always made me look into the distant future with the hope of being with him. And when my brother arrived, he agreed that I remain at the oratory to study. Wow! Ten years old and to be with Don Bosco. Above all, to study. This is how Joseph Buzetti came to the oratory where he met three other boys whom Don Bosco had brought there. During the following days, they began their studies. They were obliged to study for the next 18 months thanks to Don Bosco and to the other good teachers who guided these four youngsters, preparing them to appear for their exams that would admit them into the seminary. A few years later, Joseph Buzetti did not feel worthy enough to become a priest. Not only because he had lost a finger in an accident, but also because he preferred to devote himself to doing manual work, maintaining, repairing, assisting the boys in the refectory, organizing the cleaning of the house, ordering the bread, dispatching the wonderful magazine, Catholic readings, getting work for the workshops at the oratory, taking care of the, of the school choir. Joseph Busetti was good in music. He managed the bookstore and he would say, to work under Don Bosco's guidance, that was most important for me. In that way, he was repaying Don Bosco, his father and teacher, who had extracted him from bricks and mortar to replant him among the many boys in the oratory. Don Bosco would say, Busetti, enroll yourself as a member of the pious society. Don Bosco wanted me to become a priest. You have been with me for so many years and you find it difficult to enroll yourself. After he made his renouncement to the priesthood, Don Bosco proposed to Joseph Busetti to become at least a lay Salesian. But Joseph wouldn't hear of it. 
with Don Bosco but not as a monk. 30 years later after his first encounter we are in 1877 did Joseph Bozzetti ask to enter the Salesian congregation as a lay brother. Don Bosco was delighted. He proposed his name to the Superior Council and they willingly accepted Joseph Bozzetti into the congregation as a lay Salesian. He had been a Salesian in spirit and in fact from the moment he entered the oratory. Ten years old, Don Bosco teaching him, guiding him, taking, uh, taking him out from being a bricklayer and Don Bosco's beautiful words, come and build more houses with me. Don Bosco needed hands, hands to work, hands to build, hands to look after the orphaned, the migrant, the youngsters on the streets. He needed help. Don Bosco's charism was not something that belonged only to Don Bosco and to his congregation. Don Bosco opened it up. The Salesian cooperators was something that was already in the mind of Don Bosco. Bringing in lay people to collaborate with him, to work with him on this mission to save souls and to make of them beautiful citizens for God and for country. It was only in 1876 that Pope Pius IX officially approved the rules of the Salesian cooperators. And today, right across the world, we have Salesian cooperators who are so much part and parcel of our saving mission with the young. Don Bosco needs you. Don Bosco needs you. The Salesian charism was not the monopoly of Don Bosco, neither of his congregation. Lay externs who were motivated by the Christian spirit and who worked for the spiritual and material welfare of young people were invited to join hands with Don Bosco. In the biographical memoirs we read the mission of the cooperators is to sanctify first their own families and by their good example, by carrying out their religious duties and by helping Salesians in those things which have to be done among the people but can be better be achieved by the laity. We are in the year 2020 and Don Bosco throws that same invitation to so many people the spirit of Don Bosco is contagious. We have young volunteers coming from so many countries to work in our missions and at the same time we have so many lay collaborators joining hands with us. Today the ecclesiology of the church is to work in communion and every laity is invited to be with us. Don Bosco wanted the lay people to help us. My dear friends, I throw this invitation to you as you listen. Don Bosco's charism is contagious. We have got so many people who have become cooperators. So many people from other religions, from, from families, from lay homes. The life of Joseph Buzetti challenges you and me and challenges many other people out there to join hands with Don Bosco. Our world is filled with young people who are in need of your help. Reach out. Reach out and touch them the Don Bosco way. God bless you.